Welcome to Who's Your Neighbor? I'm Terry McGill. I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Our guest tonight is coming to us from Toronto, Ontario, where there's snow on the ground and ours has gone away for the moment. Uh, that's if you're live uh, on the show, watching it live. So this show came about two years ago, approximately, whenever COVID first hit the news, I was doing a live workshop in Beaverton, which is the other side of Portland from where I live, uh, every Wednesday night. And I read about it on the web and I just told the people, um, I emailed them, I said, we're not gonna meet live anymore. I just knew that it was not a good thing to meet in a small room. And you know the rest of the story. COVID just cranked up worldwide tremendously. After just a few months, I began to see news stories and Facebook posts and people, the biggest ones, the ones that disturbed me the most were when there was a couple living together, when they went off, one of them at least went off to work and was gone for 10 or 11 hours a day, they could get along, you know, maybe not well, but they could get along. But when they were closed up in the same house, apartment or wherever, it became brutal, literally. Not only that, but over the following months, we began to see that we need, we're human beings, we need, we need people around us. We need to be able to talk, to say hi. Uh, and after two years, we needed to get a hug. Uh, and so I was asked to start this webcast, Who's Your Neighbor? And it's based on we need to have, or at least I want to foster, um, and those that are on the team helping produce this, we want to foster inclusion, collaboration, community. And that's where the name Who's Your Neighbor came from. We, you, we don't know our neighbors. I was seeing the, the different news I, uh, items about somebody had a problem next door and the people next, you know, it was next door to them didn't even know about it because we don't know our neighbors. I know th the people on either side of us, but we hardly ever talk um, because, you know, they're coming and going, we're coming. I'm actually inside a lot. I'm retired now. So this show started to bring you people like our guests tonight. Alan Luke in Toronto I went through a course that he has because I'd been trying to launch a web business for six years and just couldn't do it. Um, blockage after blockage and not understanding all of the things that are that need to be connected. And after, I forget, six, seven, eight weeks, wow. Alan has done this for, what, 10 years or so. And talk about an internet marketing pro. So I ask him to join us tonight and welcome Alan. Hi, Terry. So, How are you? Um, I'm so glad that you could, because uh, I know it's after 10 o'clock at night there in Toronto. Yes. But I really appreciate you being willing to come up here on the show. And also, toward the end, I... Uh, you're going to offer a gift. Uh, so web marketing, funnels, and all that other jargon I had no clue about or very little. How did you start in it? How long have you been doing this? Yeah, thank you, Terry. And it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, yes, my name is Alan. I'm from Toronto, the really cold Canadian weather right now we have. <laughs> so how I got started, um, it was probably about 10, 12 years ago when I actually started my uh, digital marketing, or it was back then, it was web design uh, agency. 
it was actually just me. Uh, so I was going to the local businesses, you know, like your local spa salons, um, uh, the local restaurants. I had an interest in in like website. I actually learned it myself. I actually didn't learn it in school. Uh, I just kind of picked it up. It was HTML back then, and we use a uh, Microsoft uh, front page back in the back in the days. Uh, so I was just uh, you know playing around with it and and start doing these websites, and then I was yeah start to go to local businesses to to basically ask them if they want a website. Right, so it was actually pretty difficult to to sell um, any website. Well, ten and, years ago, people there wasn't that many people in small businesses had a website, was there? Yeah, like I, I think the trend is picking up. Like there are, uh, like the website is is got to be known, but a lot of small businesses don't fully understand like why you need it. Um, and and with Google, you know, like they understand that their people search on Google, but it wasn't like a, a very needed thing, right? So I need to actually go and and actually tell them the idea of why a website is important. So I kind of started that off, and then later on, I actually uh, start building a small team. So I I had other like a web designer building the website. So I was more going out and doing the selling. And then after that, I uh, evolved into offering some digital marketing services. Um, but then in one year, uh, my partner and I, you know, had some conflict with the business. So we kind of stopped it. But that's where I kind of started off uh, with that whole web digital marketing and those skills is kind of transferable to today now we're talking about like funnels and and you know gathering email opt-ins and you know and and also now helping uh spiritual healers to launch so, their heart-based business so alan for for those that are watching that have about as much familiarity as i did a few years ago what is a funnel and how does it work and what's the purpose yeah so when you look at traditional website right you see that they have a home page and they have probably a lot of different sub pages, right? So home, about services, when you put your you know mouse near services, another you know a uh, couple of uh, the sub menu drops down, and there could be uh, like a contact page or you know so there could be like five, six, seven, or even more pages, right? But with a funnel, so the funnel is a word that has been kind of popularized in the last probably like five, six years, uh, more mainstream. So a funnel is essentially, as the word implies, that, um, so the, the, the philosophy behind it is when you look at a funnel, right? So you start off with Y and then you go, you know, like, like, the, right, like, like that, right? So pretty much is how do you go about a like positioning a specific offer so in this, let's say if you're giving out a free gift, we call it a free lead magnet. Let's say it's a, a free uh, ebook that you're giving out, right? But, but the, the main thing about funnel is this gift is not she doesn't um, resonate with everybody, right? So it's only resonate with the specific audience. So what this, web, what this funnel does is it's going to capture a email address. That's solely the main purpose is to have one action. When people go to the web page or that funnel page, it's simply a headline, maybe a sub headline, a couple of bullet points, and say get the ebook and you put in your name and email. So you either leave the page or you give them that email address. So so the biggest question I think for me and maybe others is how do they see, what is it that, how do we put the word out there to get them to come into the funnel in the first place? Yeah, well, getting, so now you're talking about getting qualified uh, visitors or traffic to the funnel. That's always 
the million dollar question in online marketing, right? We're talking about how do you, because when you build it, they don't come, right? So in terms of uh, a tr bringing qualified visitors to a funnel, there are the free ways and there are the paid ways. So let's talk about the free ways. The free ways could be you put out a specific uh, post on social media announcing that you're giving out a free ebook, for example, right? Um, and you can announce that and you put the web, the web link, people click on it. Some will just excel the page, some read it, okay, and doesn't do anything. Or, and some read it as, oh, I'm very interested in getting Terry's book, ebook. So they, they put in the first name email and click submit. Now this email address is now in your database. So they've now to, gone into the funnel. They've gone into the first step they, of the funnel. They put themselves into the funnel by clicking on something like on something. social media, Twitter Correct. or um, yeah. all those other ones that I can't remember offhand. Exactly, exactly. So one tip I would give to the audience is when you are po uh, posting something on social media, okay, nobody, will, nobody likes to be sold. Right. So if you just come on and say, hey, get my ebook, you know, people are hmm, some, but people don't resonate with it. But one thing is you can actually tell a story. All right. So social media is all about story and engagement. Right. So if you tell a story, a personal story, that's something I always teach my student is when you tell a story. So a story, uh, a post story post is pretty much a hook, right? So a hook like grabbing somebody's attention. And then you go into a little story. The story could be a, a personal story of yours in the past, right? We can, there's a lot of story you can tell. And then you give a few, a couple of teaching points. So from the story, you learn about these two, three things, okay? And then, so their audience is learning something. And then after the, the teaching point, you give them a call to action, right? That is um, to wrap so the this book. incidentally for the uh, for our watchers and listeners, Alan spent significant amount of time opening us up. The group of uh, the I was in a uh, I don't know how many were there a dozen. Yeah, we were. We had close to probably like 12, 20 15, people. Yeah, fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So Alan helped us understand the importance of story. But let's go back to the funnel. You said mm -hmm. there were, if I heard right, you there were three different ways we draw people in. One of them is social media. How do yeah. we get more people into our funnel? Yeah, so social media using uh, so the free method. So using uh, a story posts by you sharing a story. That even means is those who see that post resonate with your story under resonate with your teach you know three or two teaching points and click on that link they're even more qualified that shows that they are actually interested in what you have to offer right. and what that also means is those who click on the link go to the funnel page it is very likely they will opt in they'll give you they'll give you their email address so the conversion Super the conversion of the opt-in is much higher. So that's the free way. The other way is paid, right? So paid means, um, you, I'm sure, you know, you, you probably have seen like a little ad on Facebook, right, uh, on Instagram. So these are called a sponsor posts. So meaning is you pay, I would just use Facebook, for example, right? Because Instagram works a little bit differently. Uh, let's say Facebook. So Facebook has a lot of data on our, all of us, okay? It's kind of scary, but it's true. So, so advertisers love marketing on Facebook. So Facebook is something we call interruption marketing, right? So, so no, when you're of? on interruption, so you're interrupting somebody. So when we look, when we go on Facebook, usually is you're just probably checking out, you know, people's photos. So you're a little bit more relaxed state, okay? Yeah. Um, which I'll talk a little bit about Google, you know, next because because Google is actually intent based, but I'll but let's go back to Facebook first. So Facebook is 
you know, we're on Facebook, probably on your phone, you're scrolling, checking out people's posts, checking out photos, and suddenly you see a post. So you're interrupting them, right? So how you interrupt people's behavior or you or interrupt what, you know, maybe they were looking at a cat video and your, your ad shows up. So that, so your headline, right, in the ad must be interesting, cur curious, right? It caused curiosity. And that picture, you know, if it's a picture... Uh, kind of a photo uh, kind of ad or video, it must be captivating, right? So for people to, because we only have like a few seconds, right? So you need to grab the attention of your audience. If they resonate, so the headline resonate, the picture resonate, they'll likely click on it to learn more. That's how when they click on it, it goes to your funnel page. But one thing I want to mention is in marketing, there is a word called congruency so meaning is the headline the photo must be congruent this you know uh, congruent means it is similar messaging so that it takes the user into the same you know if let's say if your ad is selling a weight loss product and suddenly you go here it's about cats then they'll be like confused so the messaging on the ad right of the photo they click on it it should be the same messaging if you, if you can use the same color, it'll be even better so that their your audience mind is succinct. Is oh okay, they're giving a ebook the same messaging. I want that ebook, right? So that's so, similar to the branding concept. Correct. Correct. Where, where we use colors, images that are congruent, consistent. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I talk about Facebook yeah, that is interrupting somebody's pattern. Same thing with Instagram, right? You know, you're on Instagram and you suddenly see an ad that's also interrupting somebody. But on Google, right, how we use Google is keyword based. So when you are looking for something, you actually go on Google or go on YouTube to search for something. If you want to learn about um, natural remedies for weight loss, you actually go on Google and type it in and you're expecting to find something, right? So if your ad comes up, it's actually an intent based ad because you, your ad is showing up when they most need it. Right. So, so that's the difference between intention and interruption. Yes. Correct. 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 Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even on YouTube, when you, when you on YouTube, you, uh, the way YouTube ads. So there's different social media platform or even, so we have Facebook, we have Instagram. There is the, you know, TikTok now. There is uh, YouTube, there is LinkedIn. Every platform has their own ad um, advertising, uh, pla you know, advertising ser uh, serving the platform uh, for you to go in there and put in your ad, your messaging. Uh, but you just have to really know your audience. You have to really do your research into understanding what is the best way to put your ads out there. All right. So most, um, most business owners starting off is I would not suggest you to go directly into paid advertising because you could, if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose a lot of money. Just so the best way, way, yeah, the best way is to go the free route first, test some of the, uh, your posts on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or you know LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. So putting your content out and start to analyze what are the posts that your network are engaging on, right? So so if and after a while you see a pattern, so that proves that oh if I if people like this you know kind of post or this kind of story post or content, right or, or a particular topic that you're teaching or you're sharing, then that could likely do well when it is on the paid platform, right? So you, you you use free as a as a way to to test things out, to understand about audience, right? So the most important thing I could I could say is doesn't matter if you're doing free or paid. The most important way to share your message is to really understand what your audience want like what are some topics that they would like to know so that's so important why that's why it's so important to know who you're talking to who who is your target market right or your niche market and once you yes. have that niche market you can now 
you can now research what are the pain points or what's keeping them up late at night as they think about these problems that are going through in their mind. And what I want our um, viewers to be aware of, um, Alan will explain what pain points are. He he goes into you know how he 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 just mentioned um, you know test your ads and see what works. There's a way to do that that he showed us. Um, yeah. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Terry. Uh, so pain point is really understand like what are when we look at. Um, funnels is always one problem and one solution, right? So I'll use the example back as let's say somebody is, uh, you know, having um, a headache and they're going online searching for natural remedies for headache, right? So the pain point is they have a headache, right? Or, right. or there's a recurring headache, right? And and again, there's also, you know, different kind of headache, but I'm just going to use it more general right now as those who are looking for natural remedies, right? Um, so they, they have a particular problem and they don't likely is these individuals don't like these traditional me medicine, right? Like they don't like the Western medications and things like that. So they're looking for natural medis, uh, remedies. And the so that's the pain point is they 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 have a headache they're going through this but they don't but they haven't found a solution yet and the outcome is after exposing to your funnel page or whatever you're giving away is going to close that gap between the pain point and a solution so you're presenting perhaps a, a natural remedy ingredient that has been passed down by your great grandmother and it's working amazingly, uh, you know, and now you're sharing this recipe, right? Uh, with, with your audience. So that's why somebody will give you a email address. You know, they're giving you an email address in exchange for your recipe. That they're, could be a yeah, one they page want, document. They want information. Right? They want to, they want to heal their headache. Exactly. And exactly. they're willing to give up and they won't get the information. You know, one of the things I found was, uh, I have had people that would give me a, an email address that would bounce. But if they want the, um, if they want the headache remedy, the natural yeah. headache remedy, mm -hmm. they've got to give a real email address and they won't get it. Yeah. That's why I see a lot of business owners having the wrong lead magnet. So meaning is they're giving something that the market don't really want or it's not painful enough to, for them to really get it right like you said if somebody just put a fake email then likely is they just want to check what it is but they don't really want it but if you do enough research so i can talk about um a few ways that you could you could do research is there's right now on online information is so abundant right when you go to youtube right you type in a particular keyword let's say uh you know, not uh, natural headache remedy is going to have a lot of videos that pops up, right? And the thing about these YouTube marketers is they're very smart. They like the they know what thumbnail, the titles will attract attention. So you can learn just by looking at these videos. You know, those videos that are on the first page on YouTube, and taking a look at the thumbnail, you can actually learn a lot about the the topics the the questions right you know a lot of these uh, videos are actually question based and these questions are usually what their the ideal market wants right I so i remember during the course you were you were giving us assignments to do one of them was to do exactly that yeah. go out there and see what you know in your what you think of is your niche um uh, or niche uh, i used to call it niche <laughs> Um, so it's actually a correct pronunciation either way for those of you that are wondering. I checked it out. Um, but the point is, when I went out and looked, I I did it. I found exactly what you're talking about. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, it was a real education for me. 
Yeah, absolutely. And now uh, with AI, you know, in the last few months, chat GPT has kind of blown up and a lot of people know about it. Um, and it's, you can still get a free account. You can actually ask GPT, give me 10 commonly asked question, uh, uh, you know, in the topic of natural headache remedy, right? So it's going to populate you 10 specific questions, right? So you can do so much research and understanding of your market just by asking ChatGPT, and it's going to give you everything you need, right? You, you, you can ask them to give you 50 topics, right? 50 questions. It was, it was just going to do that for you. I really appreciated your giving us that during the course because half a dozen of us was just like, wow, this is awesome. And then, yeah. and then the point that you gave to us was what was that? We have to look at it and be congruent because mm -hmm. what comes up in artificial intelligence isn't always the way that we would speak. Say more about that, would you? Exactly, exactly. So AI, you know, artificial intelligence is, is a really, I think now that they have really developed it to give you good information, but you still need to take a look at it. You know, do not copy and paste. You still have to look at it and really adopt it to your own need, right? Like when we're speaking, just pretend if you are speaking to a friend, would you say it that way, right? You still want to make it simple to understand and you still want to put some emotions and feelings to it, right? So when you're doing your marketing, when you're doing social media, nothing beats story, right? When you tell a story, when you walk people through those emotions, right? When you walk them through the lessons you learn, those are interesting. You can still use ChatGBT as a way to maybe help you to uh, give you ideas, right? On some of the learning points. But that's how, what I say is, you know, use it with caution. Like don't over depend on it, but mix your, you know, ChatGPT, but at the end of the day is make sure that you edit it to your own um, own sharing, right? You know, the way that you would share it or talk to like a, a good friend. That was one of the things that I saw. You, uh, you mentioned several points. The one I noticed most of the time, the words were fine. There wasn't any discongruency, but mm. there wasn't any fire in it either. And so I needed to put it into a different tone. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. people would go to sleep reading it. Exactly, exactly. But now with ChatGPT, you can actually ask it to, uh, you know, to write it in an exciting, uh, more upbeat tone. You can actually tell it to do that. Uh, to change the tone of the of the content. I haven't then, thought about that. That's yes, great insight. You can still do that. Yeah, you can do that. But you still want to kind of edit it uh, on your own afterwards. You know what I appreciate the most about this show is I get to talk with a lot of people in from a, all kinds of different services. And those little insights, I mean, you can tell when somebody, number one, can speak well, and number two, when, they, when they're when they really good at communicating what it is that they have discovered. Um, I, I've just appreciated going through your course. Oh, thank um, you, Terry. And uh, I hope this isn't sounding like I'm trying to sell you, but I am still so, I spent six years and over $10,000 trying to put a funnel onto the web, mm. trying to start a web-based business. And yeah. I couldn't. Mm. Um, now, I got it. The <laughs> biggest thing for me, and Alan, the biggest, um, seriously, the biggest insight I had was I had a fear. You now, everybody goes, at least a lot of people, you, you know that better than I do, I bet. They go, well, wait a minute. You know, if I, ne if, if I narrow down the group that I'm looking for, there won't be enough people to pay my bills. And one day you said something, it just, it like it turned the light on for me. The purpose of a funnel is to bring in, you know, a thousand people, 
10, how many people do we really need? I only need 10 people a month. Yeah. So if, if I'm getting 25 hits a month, I'm busy. I, that's, in fact, I'm sometimes too busy. Um, bite my tongue. I don't want to say that. But um, <laughs> the whole concept of the funnel it, and your, the insight I got from that one comment that you made is you just need to bring more people into your funnel. It's like, wow, that that was a, the biggest block I had about narrowing down who it was. And after that, it was, it was like, OK, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of it. Here is the core. Who do I where is my passion? Who do I really want to work with? Yeah, Terry, I'll, let me give you a, a, a quick example as well as because uh, I've been talking to a lot of entrepreneurs and healers is at the beginning, they, you know, they, they tell me, I want to serve everybody. I don't want to yes, reach down. I, you know, like, I, I, I have that heart to just help everybody. So here's a, um, an analogy, okay, like for, for you and the viewers to, to understand, right? So let's say, okay, that one of your really close friends you know she's a female and she is pregnant okay and she tells you hey terry i got a really big headache okay can you please go to the pharmacy and get me uh you know a headache pill okay so i can you know I, so i can cure that headache okay so you go to the pharmacy and you go to the aisle that is uh you know a lot, lot, lot lost the, the, the headache pills so but you think you see three kinds of headache pills okay so the first kind is it said you know the label says headache for adult and it's five dollars okay the next to it you see headache for woman it's ten dollars say okay now you look at the right you see a third types of headache pills it said headache for pregnant woman okay and it's twenty dollars now which which one would you get well, for me, it would be the headache for pregnant women. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the money doesn't matter as much as the solution. Exactly. Exactly. Who knows? Maybe they're all the same pills, but <laughs> you are looking <laughs> at the third, the third one, knowing that this, you know, it says a uh, headache, to, you know, for pregnant women. So just right away, it doesn't matter that this pill is four times more expensive than the first pill, you still get it because the messaging is telling you exactly that. And you're looking, when you are looking for a specific thing, that's why messaging and the niche is so important. If you say headache for adult, okay, so you might get some people, right? But the thing is, it is, it's, it's very vague, it's very broad. But you, once you focus it down to a very specific market, not only are you able to charge a higher price, but you can also connect deeper with the audience, right? And, and, I, and this also leads to kind of like the next little topic is I say in any story, the most powerful story is your origin story, right? So your origin story is where you were, like, you know, where you were is um, meaning is, those that you want to serve are likely you a few years ago, right? And you're simply bringing your own experience where you kind of walk that same path, right? So, so somebody, uh, let's say, for example, as one of my clients, you know, had experienced uh, social anxiety, okay? Um, and very shy and all that. He gone through transformation himself. He gone through healing. He he learned about confidence. So his ideal market is in fact other other individuals, men that are also going through social anxiety because he walked that path already. So when he talked to these ideal clients, he can simply share where he was a few years ago because he was at that same exact situation personal but through background. trial and error or going through healing he discover this 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 and this and with that said i would like to lead you over the next six weeks through a six-week coaching program to help you 
go from shy social anxiety to being calm, confidence, and living your best life, right? Like that's really that's really how you when you when your ideal audience listen to your content or talk to you, they're like, wow, you know, you've been there. I would like to learn the exact same steps because you're just a few steps ahead of me. So, Alan, that's a perfect segue into um, what you said, what you offered, and that is, um, what is this uh, free gift that you have? Yeah. So, a couple of weeks ago, I did um, a sixty-minute masterclass. It's a, it's a workshop, um, and it's all about launching your heart. Align business. So there are six steps, uh, you know, in launching a heart aligned business. Number one is really getting clarity and knowing your why, right? So I actually go through an exercise in that workshop that kind of walk you through getting clarity and knowing your why. And I remember second, that. I remember that one very well. Yeah, yeah. And and the second step is identifying your aligned niche audience, right? So I also go through a few questions. That you can help me to walk through, um, and I talk even talk about the origin story framework on how you can build your own origin story. And the third step is to create a heart center offer. Is what is it that you're offering in the marketplace? Are you offering a coaching program? Are you offering a course? Whatever that is, uh, is leading somebody through a transformational journey. And, and what then, I would add for our listeners. Is that there is, and you may be aware of it, but you'll be more deeply aware of it after Alan's uh, one hour course. The way that you phrase your heart centered uh, offer is, is so important. Mm. And I am still, I'm reminded again tonight how I, I was, it's just like insight after insight. Wow. <laughs> So what yeah. was point number four? Thank you, Terry. Uh, number the fourth step is now that you have you know your origin story, you have a niche market, you have an offer. Now it's put together a lead magnet, like we talked about, to create your own little funnel, right? So, uh, and then the fifth step is to once you like you asked me once you have the funnel is how do you get people to know about your little your funnel? So it's all about heart aligned sharing and marketing and storytelling and the final step is if you have a six-week coaching program or a nine-week coaching program people like to talk to you first before they go sign up so so you need to walk your audience your ideal client into a very comfortable non-salesy conversation i i, I really truly believe in the heart center sharing is really is you know you're so with conviction that you have such an amazing transformational program really is you just sharing it from your heart and connecting it back to how it helped you you know what you've gone through to learn these and you would love to pass the same wisdoms and knowledge to them so you're simply just sharing with them what is it that you've gone through and i keep saying it to to my clients too is if you are fearful or, or anxious or afraid to share, you're actually doing your prospect, your ideal clients a disservice, right? Because you know you have something powerful, but if you're shy or afraid to share it, where would they go, right? You're actually being a little selfish on not sharing with them this is a solution that could help them. That's so great. that's really the six-step process yeah. to launch your heart aligned business so this uh, one hour uh, is that this uh, how is it that you're offering it uh, so for those that go to heart businesscom they I appreciate what I what I said is uh, you you get you put in an email address and then you'll be able to watch that uh, 60 minute workshop and I'm sure and you'll be able free. to pick up some yeah it's free it's free it's a, it's a 60 minute workshop yeah so and for our viewers, down at the bottom, you'll see the uh, the URL there, the, the the page to go to, and our producer will put that over in the comments section. So it's going to be there for you to refer to after it disappears off our screen here. Um, 
and you're going to be able to watch this video again. Um, it's recorded. It's, it's going to be on Facebook. Who knows how long? Forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you'll also be able to connect with Alan. And um, we'll put his contact information into the comments also. Here's his email right now. And if you don't get it all copied down, uh, our producer is going to put it over in the comments section, and it'll be there. So, Alan, I hope that our viewers haven't felt like I was trying to sell you, but it's a free gift. And, it's a free gift, yeah. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, I went through, I forget how many weeks it was, um, but all I know is I had so many insights and I had so many personal blockages dissolved. Mm. And the biggest one, uh, well, actually telling my, my uh, origin story was a big yeah. one. Um, yeah. because it's, I didn't realize how much I worried about what people would think about me if I, if mm -hmm. I really shared stuff. Um, yeah. so there yeah. was a big insight for me, but the biggest one, the biggest block that I had, and it just dissolved that one day when you said something and it was like, whoa, I got it. A funnel is like, it's like a big net if you're fishing. If you're out there with a little net on the end of a stick, mm -hmm. uh, there could be a thousand fish where you're dipping in, but you're not going to get that many in a little net. But if you've got a big net, then some of those, you're not going to catch them all, but you're going to get enough. And then those will, people will go into your funnel. Um, Alan used the term lead magnet. Uh, that's, and, you know, he will describe that. I, I'm imagining you're going to describe it in this uh, 60 minutes. Yes, it's everything is uh, is uh, uh, is explained, and I even share about my origin story on how I actually, from working with local businesses to to now working with uh, the spiritual community because of that huge transformation that I've gone through, and that was my origin story. So. If somebody is interested after watching the video, are you going to be offering these courses anymore? Yeah. So for those that are interested um, on that same page, so once you you give an email, you got to watch the recording. And if you have any questions or you would like to connect with me, there is actually a Calendly link at the bottom of that page uh, where you can actually book a call with me and we can discuss to see how I can help you further. So, you know, I'm just realizing, Alan, your recording is a lead magnet, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Click. I got it. And, uh, you know, I think what I appreciate the most about you, the information is great. Um, and there's actually, I didn't run down to, and, and I, you know, I've 10, there's, what was it, six years, um, you know, I, I talked, I was, I registered for a lot of courses. I went through them. Um, but two things, I never met anybody, never heard of anybody. And when they said, well, you know, check with my team, they were not as heart centered by mm. far. They, they were, they had good intentions, but they were in a hurry. Um, yeah. I never felt like they, really heard me mm. um, and and with you that was what I appreciated uh, if I remember right you gave us an extra session beyond yeah. uh, what what we'd signed up for yeah what a practice session yeah. yeah one of the thing I find is when others share you get to learn and you also eliminate that self-doubt as well because others have gone deep, for example, in their origin story. So you suddenly, your heart starts to open more and you begin to pull up those layers and you begin to be authentic, to become vulnerable, to really step into your true voice. And when you come into that place and position, that's how you can really connect and resonate with your ideal audience. Well, Alan, I am so grateful that you stayed up late at night um, 
to be the guest tonight on Who's Your Neighbor? And if for our viewers, if you're wondering about, well, wait a minute, he's 2,700 miles away. How's he my neighbor? We're a global <laughs> community anymore. I mean, we're, this is the web. I've got yeah. friends, uh, really, in um, Mumbai, uh, India, mm. in Perth, Australia, um, Malaysia, uh, wow. Philippines, uh, as well as, you know, North America. Yeah. So who's your neighbor? Uh, if you, our viewers, know someone, Alan, if you do, um, who are really heart-centered mm. and offering services, uh, please let me know. Um, you can send an email to, and um, uh, Michelle, if you'd put it up there, Terry McGill at Comcast.net. Uh, I'm always looking for someone like you, Alan. It's like, wow, this is, there's so much value here. I've got a personal uh, experience with, with what you offer. Um, Thank you, Terry. Yeah, well, there's there's my email address. Great. So um, it's interesting. I just realized why I'm not seeing things in comments because I hadn't clicked. I still had it on private chat. For those of you that are viewers, it's over on the right hand side that you can't see on my screen. But I wasn't seeing what you were seeing in the comments. <laughs> now I can see it. And um, so, Alan, I want to. I just again thank you so much. It's. Um, thank you, Terry. It's, you know, it's time for us to end. Um, yeah. So I'll be in touch. Um, and I hope we'll be able to uh, maybe have lunch together when I'm in Toronto next week. That's my time and, and his time right now. If you're watching and recording it, we uh, may have already met. So I'm Terry McGill. This is Who's Your Neighbor? And... Next week, you know, I forget how many episodes this is, uh, 47. This is the 47th interview. These are all on the Facebook page. And there's a wealth of information. There are so many people in this world who offer heart-centered services. And I know because I've interviewed a whole bunch of them. And I'm looking for others. So if you know of some please do let me know. My email address, I don't see it over there yet, but um, it's Terry McGill. And, and Terry's spelled many different ways. With a guy, it's always T-E-R-R-Y. McGill is, M there it is, it's over in the, uh, it's in the comments now. Um, please send me an email. Um, and, with, and you might ask the contact person first before you share their email. Um, and I, you probably already figured that out. But thank you so much for being with us tonight and or today, whenever you're watching and wherever you are in the world, we are neighbors. And so until next time, who's your neighbor? <laughs>